So I wanted to make a video. About the purchase I had made of a 2016 Tesla X P90D. Not my first electric car. Um, I had a Nissan Leaf um, just to see if I liked the idea um, and could get over that range anxiety. And if you can drive a Nissan Leaf and I have range anxiety, because uh, that's very short range of only about 100 miles, uh, you can you can drive any electric car and I have the range anxiety. I actually purchased this car uh, what high 60,000 miles. The reason I went with the 2016 uh, was because free supercharging for the life of the car, uh, regardless of who owns it. So if I s decide to sell it or when I decide to sell it, the next owner will also get your free supercharging. Um, also, there's a data plan I think it's I know, it's nominal, maybe twelve, fifteen dollars a month, uh, associated with uh, if you want the full GPS capabilities, um, if you want to do things like stream um, and have the internet on the large multi-screen display uh, in this car. That's also free for the life of the car. Uh, and I chose the P90 uh, versus just a regular version because I like sports orientated. This is fast. Uh, numbers wise, uh, this is just as quick uh, as the Porsche. Uh, would I buy another Tesla? Absolutely. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit later on um, after I talk more about this specific vehicle. Uh, it was a little bit of a trial by fire. Uh, I bought the vehicle from a dealership in Denver, Colorado. Uh, I bought it around, I believe, December 20th of last year. Um, I flew out there on the 22nd. Need to be back home uh, here on the East Coast by Christmas Eve. Bought the car. Uh, did the final inspection when I got out there. Took it for a quick test drive. Uh, got the temporary plates on it. Drove it straight back. I trusted the car as far as telling me where to stop for superchargers. Um, at no point um, was I really ever nervous about not making it from one point to the next. Uh, I charged to where they told me to charge to for the most part and continued on from there. There are a lot of electric vehicles out now. Um, I've had the opportunity to test drive some of them. Uh, a lot of them are great. Uh, that new Ford Mach-E is a great vehicle. Uh, what every other manufacturer is missing, as far as I'm concerned, uh, they don't have the supercharging network. Uh, there's nothing that compares to it. I know that now he, meaning Elon Musk, Tesla, is opened up that supercharging network. Uh, if you want to pay a fee, um, other EVs can use it not sure how I feel about that um, it hasn't affected me yet um, I understand his reasoning uh, for doing that uh, is because one he said he'd never make money on supercharging uh, and two he wants to have as many EVs out there as possible and right he knows that no one has um, a network as extensive as his it even goes as far to show you when you're looking on the display how many they are, how many superchargers there are at that location, how many are available at that particular time in real time, and also the charging rate. Uh, you may hit one that's 150 kilowatts um, or 250 kilowatts. Uh, I'm fortunate, I live uh, in an area where less than 10 minutes from my house is a supercharging station. Um, if I so choose, um, I need to supercharge real quick, uh, but typically, um, I leave it plugged in at home. Um, unlike the Nissan, it's okay to leave your Tesla's plugged in all of the time. Uh, they have a great battery management system. Uh, I did not opt to buy the fancy 220 wall charger uh, because the only reason I would have been buying it uh, is because it looks really cool uh, in my garage for when my friends come 
you can see this cool supercharger or this cool charger uh, in my garage uh, that has the Tesla symbol on it. Uh, the reality of it is the charger that comes with the vehicle is both 110, which gets you hardly any miles charged per hour. Also, it comes with a 220 adapter, which gets you, I believe, 24 to 26 miles per hour of charge. Uh, so each night I plug in, uh, I don't drive, this is my primary car anymore. Uh, I have a work car um, that I use. Um, so I should say not my primary car when I'm, when I'm not working. Uh, this is the vehicle that I'll drive most of the time. Um, I still have the Porsche. Uh, and that'll be another video if I should decide to get rid of that. Um, and I also have the, uh, the Hummer H2. The range on this vehicle was 250 miles as advertised uh, with a full charge from the time I got it um, it's saying uh, consistently around 230 miles partly that is because I have the 21 inch rims um, and I know that you get reduced range with the 21 inch rims uh, stiffer ride uh, but definitely the way to go aesthetically. Uh, if I was buying a car new, um, I sure I would expect the same rims. Uh, the car handles really good. That low center of gravity from the battery uh, definitely doesn't handle like uh, any SUV I've driven. Uh, I'm getting over 200 miles real world uh, driving. Uh, if you keep your foot out of it, uh, it's tough to keep your foot out of it. The acceleration in a car, uh, it's an EV, right? Electric, at that, you know, immediate torque um, is what you're feeling. Um, so yeah, you just never get tired of it. It did take me a little while to get used to how quiet the car is. Uh, you know, you hear just road noise and a little bit of wind noise um, versus, you know, that whole mechanical, um, very visceral feel um, I had in the vehicle like the Porsche or even the Hummer. Uh, this is definitely a completely different experience. This car has uh, a factory extended warranty. Um, I did have an issue with the front drive motor, uh, but that has a very long warranty um, from the factory uh, along with the battery uh, on this vehicle. I had a window regulator um, let go. That was also covered uh, for the initial uh, front drive motor. Um, I had to make an appointment had to wait like a week and everything's done on the app um, I had to wait like a week uh, before I could get in to drop the vehicle off they did give me a loaner uh, they gave me a model 3 uh, I asked the service manager uh, is that typical that I have to wait so long to get in for a service apartment something I'm not used to with the Porsche right I make a call um, and it was drop it off you know the next day if not that day so what I was told by the service manager is that when you put the description in the app of what's wrong with your vehicle, they also tap into the computer of your vehicle and do a diagnostic. Any parts that they may need to fix the vehicle are already ordered and on hand when you drop off your vehicle. So once your vehicle is at Tesla, it's a very short stay. Um, I was out of town when the window regulator broke, um, I couldn't make the appointment through the app. Uh, so I actually just showed up at the dealership first thing in the morning. Um, they took me priority. Um, by the time I went to get breakfast and came back, uh, it was fixed. Um, and actually the app right let me know that the vehicle was ready. Um, they even went a step further. Uh, rather than giving me a loaner car because they didn't have any, uh, they put, uh, miles uh, on an app so I could call and have a driver drive me to a local place to get breakfast and come back which I thought was really cool um, and the fact that they got me in uh, first thing uh, and I was told that that's a priority call um, you're traveling um, and you're from out of town um, that they will get you right in uh, I did have uh, another issue which I thought was a door sensor uh, with the rear door uh, not closing correctly um, on the gold wing door uh, they actually came out to the house for that um, and in the 
app, it says that they'll come to whatever address you want. So be it your place of work um, or your residence, which I thought was another uh, cool feature uh, or perk, I should say, to owning a Tesla. Uh, I am 110% sold on Tesla. This is not obviously uh, an advertised or paid um, advertisement by Tesla. They're not paying me or sponsoring anything. Um, I actually absolutely love the company. I've pre-ordered the Cybertruck. Uh, we'll wait and see um, how long that's gonna take, um, if it's gonna take uh, a tremendous amount of time. Um, I'm getting a little antsy. Um, I, I really like the Plaid, so I may uh, end up ordering uh, a Model S Plaid uh, rather than not getting the Cybertruck. But first choice, I would like to you know, get the Cybertruck. Undecided what I'll do with this when the Cybertruck comes in uh, Or if I get the Modelist Plaid, I don't know if I'm going to keep this one um, or Get rid of it uh, This is uh, got a lot of extra features like you know the gold wing doors um, the self-presenting doors uh, even the driver's side front um, and driver's door you just kind of flip the handles uh, when you're on the interior the doors open up um, if you push the button on the exterior and uh, and the doors open uh, so just little extra things that are that are very cool this vehicle has that white interior uh, it's a synthetic material uh, it's non-staining um, and I have had uh, some things spilled on it and it's non-staining um, I just keep baby wipes in the car um, they say just a damp cloth uh, with water. Um, I use baby wipes, uh, non-scented, and I just, you know, probably once a month or so, give uh, the interior a good wipe down. Uh, I wear blue jeans a lot, and you will get transfer from the blue jeans onto the seats. Not like, you know, a dark, um, but once a month or so, I can start to see a little bit of blue. Uh, but the baby wipes, just take a, a wipe, uh, and wipe it right off. It's not even like anything heavy scrubbing. It, it wipes clean. Um, so that, that's very cool. I like the white interior. I was a little nervous about it initially, uh, but I watched uh, Kim Javis uh, YouTube, uh, and she's one of the reasons watching stations like that that actually got me really interested in Teslas. Uh, and she actually did a lot of tests of putting things on the seats in one of her videos um, and wiping them off. Uh, so, you know, another thing, right, Tesla did a, did a great job with. Um, I have no complaints on this vehicle whatsoever. Uh, like I said, I'll talk later on about, you know, what I would do or what I'm going to do as far as the Porsche goes. Um, and I won't need, if I get the Cybertruck, to keep the Hummer because of the tow rating. Um, I have complete confidence in driving, uh, you know, specifically Tesla EVs. Uh, this vehicle's also going to Florida. Uh, it does take, you know, more time because you're stopping to charge. Uh, but, you know, I think that uh, negates, uh, you know, the I should say, I think the benefits of driving the EV negates the time it takes to stop uh, for the charging because you're never at a charging station for, you know, an hour and a half. Uh, you know, you'll get to learn the vehicles as you drive them. Um, one of them is, you know, the lower the battery, the faster it charges up. If you have a lot of energy already, uh, it doesn't charge that quickly, right? The, the charging rate slows greatly. Uh, so if on, you know, one of the apps you're using or if directly on the screen, it tells you, hey, uh, charge to, you know, the next stop, you're gonna have, you know, 10% when you get there. Don't be nervous about that. Um, you don't want to get to the next stop on a large trip uh, and have 40% of your battery because you're going to be there longer. It's charging at a much slower rate. You want it to be at that lower, lower end. Uh, like I said, I trust what the computer's been telling me. Uh, it's been, you know, completely accurate. I've never been, you know, nervous or had that range anxiety. Um, and I've gotten down to 2% uh, before I've gotten to the next area. That's what it said I would have. Um, and actually, it, it said I was going to have 2%. Uh, the computer is very conservative. When I got there, I think I had 5 or 7%. Um, and typically, once you start driving, the percentage of battery you're going to have at the next stop goes up, um, which is kind of cool. Um, there's been some times when I might have gotten a little bit carried away with my speed, and it's told me, slow down to whatever speed it wants me to slow down to, to make it to the next stop. So it's constantly monitoring you. 
uh, to make sure that you're gonna get to the next stop. Uh, I believe there's no place in North America, um, or specifically the United States, I should say, that you can't get to with your Tesla vehicle. Uh, and this one being the year and being the SUV uh, has low uh, range um, as compared to some of the new ones, right? I think the, the Cybertruck truck is uh, upwards of 600 miles is what they're saying, which is absolutely insane. Um, I put a lot of miles on vehicles. Uh, I'm in the 80 range on this now um, because I've done so much traveling in it. Uh, whenever I have to take a long trip or the ski season's coming up, uh, this will be my primary vehicle uh, to go up skiing unless the weather is crazy bad, then I'll take the Hummer. Uh, I took this up skiing last year. Uh, my ski trips uh, are about three and a half hours um, from where I live. Uh, and where I ski, my primary mountain is Okemo in Vermont. Uh, they have level two chargers right there, which is the same like I have at my house. I get there, I plug in, um, and I'm leaving skiing uh, with 100% uh, battery or whatever I set to charge. At. Um, usually I don't set it above 90% unless I'm gonna go on a real long trip. Um, daily, um, I keep it at 60%. Uh, that's supposed to help with battery longevity. I haven't seen any degradation in the year um, in 20,000 miles or so since I've had the vehicle. Uh, it, it's been fantastic. Uh, and you can check on YouTube to see, you know, how many miles people are getting out of these uh, before there's any issue with the batteries. Uh, and it seems like uh, as long as you're even in that battery warranty, don't be scared about buying uh, a used Tesla. Um, I have no regrets about buying a used Tesla. Um, I was a little nervous with the miles, um, with battery degradation, uh, but I knew I had a lot of warranty left. Uh, it updates constantly. Uh, something that wasn't broken, uh, but I just upgraded was the CPU of the screen. Uh, I just wanted the latest greatest because I got some additional features uh, when I did that upgrade. But Tesla themselves are constantly sending upgrades and the car will tell you uh, there's an upgrade available when you're hooked up to Wi-Fi. Let it do the upgrades. Uh, the zero to 60 performance has actually gotten quicker since I bought the vehicle. Um, so he's updated it and put more performance into the vehicle. Not that it needs more performance, right? Because it's already so quick. But he put more performance into the vehicle. So anyone that's looking to buy a used Tesla, um, with you know, what seems like higher miles, as uh, long as everything else checks out on a vehicle, I wouldn't be nervous. Um, about doing that at all uh, They're fantastic vehicles and like I said uh, in the near future I may end up getting rid of all of my gas vehicles um, And just having EV Hope you found this video helpful uh, Don't forget to hit the subscribe and like button and I'm gonna try to you know up my videos um, Because of my profession uh, It's been really busy uh, I've lately had uh, promotion at work um which has increased my responsibilities which is not necessarily a bad thing gonna try to get on at least one video a week keep the channel going uh so very much would appreciate your support and so the people that are watching so far thank you very much everybody stay safe